For starters, Complete Vocal Institute is a great school. I just want to preface this whole video by, by saying this is not an anti-CVI thing by any means. I think they're great. Catherine Sadelin is brilliant. Her team is awesome. I think their program is good. In fact, I've met Catherine twice. We're friends. I've been to Copenhagen. I've had dinner with Catherine and her husband. I mean, these are good people, all right? And they've done a lot to help out the world of singing. But um, the other thing they've done is inspired some folks. <laughs> they inspired me. The main difference between um, CVI and, and TVS is, is that CVI, as I understand it, I'm not a certified teacher by those by CVI, but I, I have their book and I've read the information. I, I know enough of what I need to know. They offer these vocal modes and their vocal modes include all the technical elements involved in singing great. So that is to say that a CVI vocal mode also addresses the shape of your embouchure, it addresses vowels, it addresses levels of compression on the vocal folds, levels of respiration. These are all individual elements of technical elements that are required for singing great that we, that we you know, work with and that we teach about. In fact, all of these elements, these technical elements, acoustic and physical elements, we give them a name in TVS. We call them the phonation package. All right. So in a sense, what CVI, what CVI is doing with their acoustic modes is they're, they're taking all the elements of the phonation package and throwing them into one mode. Now, in my opinion, that makes things a bit more, um, it can make things a little bit more complicated to understand. When you've got all of these elements stacked inside of one vocal mode, it can become complex. Well, when I wrote the book, The Four Pillars of Singing, um, and developed the coursework system, I, I did really like the way CVI has, has oriented their modes around the vowels, around sound colors, the vowels. But I didn't like um, the way they added all those other technical elements I was just describing because it dilutes the message. It sort of clouds the biggest message, what I believe to be the most important thing, most important element in that phonation package, and that is vowels, resonance, and formants. An argument can be made. That's the most important thing in vocal technique to ha be having discussions about, the acoustics of singing. So what I want to do when I develop the TVS acoustic modes is develop a similar set of, of categories of vowels or acoustic modes that is sort of similar to CVI in that we have modes that some of them share the same name, such as edging and curbing and neutral. But unlike CVI, who puts the entire phonation package in every mode, adding complexity, what we've done with TVS is I've only used the vowels. So TVS acoustic modes is only the vowels, right? It's only talking about the acoustics, um, whereas CVI is talking about the acoustics and has a whole bunch of other stuff thrown in, right? Now, that doesn't make it wrong, um, and, and it doesn't make it right either. I'm not passing judgment, I'm just saying, I'm a guy that wrote a book and developed a method, and I didn't want to complicate my modes with a lot of moving parts and a lot of additional stuff stuffed in it. What I wanted to do is create modes that were only dedicated to acoustics and vowels, which I feel are the most important thing. It doesn't matter if you have all this other stuff in a mode if you don't understand the vowels first. All right? So CVI has modes called curbing and edging and neutral and I also have modes that are called curbing, edging and neutral and I think that's where the confusion is coming. I think that's where I'm sort of being accused of copying them. Uh, maybe I, I, I use their terms 
but what's inside those modes is entirely different. They have a whole bunch of stuff. I have only vowels. That's the difference. Now, you might ask, well, why did you use their term? Why, 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 you know, they use curbing, let them have curbing, and why don't you call yours something else? Well, I thought about calling my modes something else, but I don't, I, I don't think it's responsible to do that. I believe it would be very sort of irresponsible to create a whole nother set of terms over here, adding more confusion to the industry when there are perfectly good terms over here already being used, all right? Um, so my reasoning for using the curbing, edging, and neutral terms in my acoustic modes is to, to not add additional levels of confusion to the overall uh, lexicon of talk track in the industry. I thought the more responsible thing to do would be just use terms that are already being used or repurpose those terms that are already being used with a slightly different meaning. All right? Now, we already do this as well. For example, vocal twang is a term I believe was originally originated, I believe it was originally um, created by Estill, the Estillians. All right? um, Joe Estill came up with this term vocal twang. Well, now CVI talks about vocal twang and SLS talks about vocal twang and I talk about vocal twang and people that don't have books or methods are talking about vocal twang. That doesn't mean they ripped off a still. It just means that they adopted a term that has become an industry standard to, to get an idea across and that's what people do. That's just common human behavior. And if you're um, an academic, if you're a teacher, then you'll also use the proper established talk track in terms as much as you can, even if you are developing your own thing. All right, so that's the truth. That's the real story about TVS versus CVI. And, there, and by the way, TVS and CVI actually happen to be, and I've always said this, very compatible. <laughs> They're very compatible together. Um, you can get some great detail on CVI's book. I recommend it. It's a great book. I have it. Um, and TV, TVS sort of follows up on that, plus we elaborate on onsets and training workflows. And one thing that's really different about TVS and CVI is that we're big on training. We offer you content um, facilities, scales, files, workouts. I demonstrate all the workouts as well. We have notated workouts, where CVI apparently isn't really doing much of that. Um, I believe there's a sample file they give you, but they don't really teach their students how to train. Now, um, with all due and proper respect, I think that's, um, I think students are missing out with that. Students need to learn good methodology and, and good theory, but they also need to learn just how to train, how to apply. All right? So. I hope that answers some questions and, for the record, clarifies the difference between TVS and CVI and what I'm doing and what they're doing and how we're familiar and similar and how we're different in some ways. Take care, and um, if you like the video, be sure to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and wait for the next one. Thanks for watching.